Did you know that you have a nursery of fruit trees, shrubs, trees and shrubs right in your yard, right on your property, right under your nose? And you may not even notice it, worth hundreds, even thousands of dollars? I want to show you how to find them, how to gather them, and what to do with them. Stay tuned. I'm pumped. I'm excited. This is better than Christmas and the Easter Bunny combined. Hey, this last week I've been seeing little trees, tiny little trees starting to emerge. And I said, this is the time, this is the period to start gathering some seedlings. There is seedlings all over your yard. And if you saw some of my earlier videos, I talked about the seedling orchard. Well, here's a seedling. In this case, it's a pear. And I want to replant these to the pear and apple and plum orchard that I've already started. What makes this time of year particularly good? And there's a few things about when to get your new seedling trees. Get them before you mow. So I haven't mowed at all yet in the orchard. And so they're starting to show up. Also, we've had a good rain. Finally, it was a dry spring. We had a good one and a half inch rain. And so a lot of these just popped in the last few days. So before the grass gets too tall and hides these tiny little seedlings, now is the chance to get in there and gather up enough to replant the whole orchard. Where would you find them? You think, well, you know, my yard is big. Find them where the seeds are likely to fall. In this case, here's a huge pear tree. It's logical to think that there were pears got smushed in the ground, overripe, and the seeds were here. And that's what's happened. So I could identify these and say it's this cultivar and they're gonna have this one as a parent at least. So look under a tree that's existing, look under a hedge, look under a wire because it's not just fruit that falls it's animals that eat the fruit and when they've eaten them and they pass them through their digestive system there's nothing better than a seed that's got scarified by the stomach acids and then it's surrounded with fantastic fertilizer as soon as it falls in the right condition it's perfectly ready to germinate maybe you've heard that expression the apple doesn't fall far from the tree well, there's a good reason for that. You want seedlings that didn't fall far from the tree, especially for mycorrhiza. You may have heard of that stuff. You could buy it and add it to the tree. But really, this tree, in this case, an old pear tree, has already formed the whole connection of mycorrhiza fungi in the soil. These seeds, when they germinated, Almost immediately, they found spores of the mycorrhiza that this tree, the parent, is associated with. So you can pretty well be sure that these little pear seedlings are already inoculated with that mycorrhiza fungi. You don't, if you want, you can add some, but I would be pretty certain on an older tree, you've got very good mycorrhizal association to guarantee that this tree is off to a great start. One of the things I like to do to harvest these is get basically all the roots of these. They're tiny, but I want to get all the roots. So I want to keep as much as possible uh, a root ball that holds together. The conditions are perfect. It's moist, so the soil holds together. And so I like to do just three one side, two sides, and three sides. In this one, I've got two little trees. There's another one. I'll get that right away. One, two, three. Don't worry, I'm leaving holes. I'll come back and I'll fill them up with some sand but that's all I have to do to get a whole quantity of them. Just to make the logistics easier, I use two buckets, one for pear, one for apple. So the clumps that I've dug up, each one with, this one has two trees. Here I got a pear bucket. So pear will go with pear. And then 
I'll find the other ones that I've got. And what's this? Another pair. Put it in with the pairs. They tend to be similar species together. That one's a pair. And that one's a pair. Those of you who've watched some of the videos, you may have known this is the seeded orchard. In this case, it's a green tape indicating pear trees. What I want to do to transplant the tree is not disturb the root ball. I have a root in here that literally has never been cut, never been disturbed, and I want to make a hole basically the same size as my little triangular root ball, put it in, put some mulch back on, not disturb it, and let it go. So let me show you the steps. Clear the mulch first. I don't want to be burying mulch in there. May as well take out any grasses that I don't want competing with my little trees. Try to make two triangles, basically the same size as they were when I took the divots out. There's one. And you'll say, hey, you're putting more than one tree in there. Yes, I'm putting three trees in here. Simply because, well, <laughs> you know, things happen. And I'm not sure that the trees will all survive. So here goes one. And actually there's two and two, so there's four seedlings. That matches in, that matches in. Put a layer of mulch just leaving the seedlings exposed. This is a well prepared site. Lots of mul hay mulch in here that's well rotted. And now that's basically it. Tomorrow we're expecting 10 to 15 centimeters of snow. So that's actually perfect to water these in slowly and hopefully they'll be good to go. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com Subscribe please! Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye!